welcome everyone uh, in attendance, as well as those of us that are online. And will you please join me with the face of God. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Mrs. Martin, will you please report our attendance? Seven board members present tonight, two absent, Mark Gensel and Phil Hurst. Okay, we do have a, a farm, and also in attendance are the superintendent and administrative cabinet. This is the second meeting of the month where most official votes are taken, many of which are listed on a consent agenda, which includes those items which are routine or have been discussed at our work session last week, details of all items related, uh, related public documents as well as minutes of past meetings are available on the district website and posted on the agenda. Our meetings observe the requirements of the school code, legislative directives, the original Act 84 Sunshine Law, all subsequent amendments, judicial rulings, and our district policies to the best of our understanding and ability. Details of all items related to these public documents, as I said, as well as minutes of past meetings, are available on the district website and the posted agenda. Are there any changes, additions, or deletions from tonight's agenda? If not, I would take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays or abstentions? If not, the agenda is accepted. We will start with our board commendations, which is our opportunity to recognize both staff and students for exceptional achievements. Congratulations to CV High School teachers Brandon Hershey, Susan Scales, and several high school students who were featured in a short documentary regarding the high school's involvement in the Lancaster Chamber's Discovery Paths Mentorship Program. Mr. Hershey and Mr. Scales are the school liaisons who helped facilitate CV students' participation in the program. Congratulations to Brownstown Elementary Head Coach Robert Howe, who was highlighted by SOS of Lancaster for his outstanding work at Brownstown. Mr. Howe was recognized for, quote, going above and beyond his work duties, always finding time to help staff with anything they need, even though he is extremely busy making Brownstown sparkle. Robert finds time for their students, whether it is a fist bump, high five, or help open a snack or drink. He is right there and does this with a smile on his face. Brownstown Elementary is very lucky to have him. Congratulations to senior field hockey players Sophia Livingston and Mikala Rainier, who were named Class 2A State All-Stars by the Pennsylvania High School Field Hockey Coaches Association. Both were also named Lancaster Lebanon League All-League players in November. And Rainier led Section 1 in scoring this past fall. Board comments. Will any board members have Oops. comments on the activities? Did I Super skip something Senate. already? Superintendent comments. Oh. Do you really want to? I, I've got a whole bunch tonight. Okay. <laughs> Superintendent's comments first. All right. Thank you, Madam <laughs> President. You'll notice two additions to the superintendent's report highlighted in red. After the agenda was posted on Friday, I was able to conduct an interview for an open position for math at the middle school and make an offer to Jessica Duvall. We'll learn a little bit more about Jessica in a minute. You'll also notice the transfer of Aaron McGarrow from the middle school to the high school music department. And one other point of interest on the agenda is the feedback as requested by Mr. Gensel for the elementary math program, Stepping Stones. That can be found under the curriculum and instruction report. So as I mentioned, I'd like to thank the administrators and teacher leaders who continue to find outstanding educators as we still receive last minute resignations. While this seems like a never ending process, I'm proud to introduce five educators tonight joining our team to make a positive difference in the lives of every child every day without exception. First, Keith Stolzus. Keith, are you here? There he is. <laughs> to say that Keith brings the students to CBA experience is an understatement. He earned his bachelor's degree from Lebanon Valley College and his master's from LaSalle University. Additionally, he has three years teaching in Maryland to go with seven years teaching in Central Dolphin School District. What sets him apart is his 14 years as a 78th Army bandsman 
As an Army Reservist playing the saxophone, Keith is a low windwood section leader. We are excited to see the impact Keith will have on our elementary students. Welcome, Keith. Thank you. All right, next we have Bart Chersky. Bart has probably gained more teaching experience from CV before being offered a permanent job than anyone I can recall in recent times. A graduate of Millersville University, with degrees in government and political affairs and secondary social studies education, Bart completed his student teaching assignment at the middle school. From there, he earned his business education certification and was a long-term substitute for over a year in CV High School's business department. He then did a long-term subposition at Governor Mifflin High School before returning to CV where he was emergency certified in health and physical education to work a long-term substitute position there covering high, um, classes at the middle school. We are happy to finally <laughs> offer Bart a permanent home as the new full-time business teacher at the high school. Welcome, Bart, or in your native Polish language, gratulacja. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Next person is Jessica Duval. As I mentioned, I interviewed her late Friday. Jessica is a powerhouse of positivity. She comes to us with a depth of knowledge and experience in making a positive difference in the lives of all students. In addition to her bachelor's degree from Millersville University in elementary education and special education, she has earned two master's degrees, both from Wilkes University, the first in education with a concentration in classroom technology, and the second in education with a certification in online teaching with a PDE endorsement. She put that knowledge to work as a fourth and fifth grade teacher at SDOL, and most recently as a special education teacher of mathematics at Manor Middle School in Penn Manor. Jessica's positive energy and skill in dif differentiated instruction will be a solid addition to our middle school math team. Jessica, from one loud person to another, welcome. Thank you. Happy to be here. Very excited. Here, which gets excited. Jesus, hard on boy. <laughs> Next up, Robert Gaines. Robert is one of our newest administrators tonight, our new assistant principal at Huskin Middle School. He earned his bachelor's degree in child and family development from American Military University in Charlestown, West Virginia, and his master's degree in early childhood education from Millersville University, and his principal certification from Eastern University. He's able to earn those degrees while serving our country in the Air Force as an evaluator loadmaster. He's the one person on the plane even the pilot wants in order to make sure equipment and personnel are secured and where they should be so the plane is maneuverable. He brings that sense of organization, personal connections, and calmness in the face of fire that translates seamlessly to a middle school environment. <laughs> I know that Rachel, Eric, and the middle school faculty and staff are excited to bring him on as part of the administrative team. Welcome to CV, Robert. Adelina Via Roel Matos. Via Roel Matos. Estante bien? Gracias. Nina, as she prefers, is our long awaited, super qualified, and customer service focused new addition to the Central Administrative Team. She'll be filling the position of Human Resources Supervisor. I'm so excited. <laughs> well, I'm not done yet. I've got a lot more to talk about She earned her associate's degree in specialized business and business administration management from the Consolidated School of Business and her bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in human resources management from Central Pennsylvania College. Nina has always wanted to be part of public education and helping people. She started her career as a school secretary for a little over seven years with School District of Lancaster. She then used her degree and worked her way up from HR assistant at LGH Penn Medicine to director of HR at Lancaster Nursing and Rehab, and her most recent job as manager of human resources at Graham Architectural Products. I can't tell you again how happy we are to welcome Nina mm -hmm. to the CD family. I'm very excited. Thank you. All right, finally, J January is Board Recognition Month. We can't thank these unpaid volunteers enough for putting the needs of every child every day without exception at the forefront of their decision making. Whether it's passing a budget or hiring a new superintendent, 
Decisions are made on what's best for the entire district with the obvious focus on students' emotional, social, academic, and future successes at the forefront. This year, instead of giving the board members tokens of our appreciation, we have worked with board members and asked them to provide a book of their choosing that means something to them and to donate that book to one of our school libraries. Now don't worry, those books also have to go through the same approval processes that every other donated book goes through. But let me read out the books that have been chosen and who donated them and where they're going. The book is The Oath by Frank Peretti. Mr. Hurst is donating that to the high school. The Chronicles of Narnia, the full color set, including The Magician's Nephew and The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe by C.S. Lewis. Mr. Doman is sending that over to Leola Elementary. Number of the Stars, Lois Lowry by Dr. Martin going to the middle school. Tuesdays with Maury by Mitch Album, Ms. Trowbridge sending that to the high school. Um, Rise to Rebellion by Jeff Shara by Mrs. Kapka also going to the high school. Halloween Night by R.L. Stein, Mr. Benigno, sending that over to the Brownstown Elementary. The War That Saved My Life and The War I Finally Won, it's a two book set by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. Mr. Talley is also sending that to Brownstown. The Seven Habits of Effective Teens by Sean Covey. Mrs. Groff is sending that to the high school. And Ender's Game by Orson Scott Card by Mr. Gensel, one copy each to the middle school and high school. That's pretty awesome. So thank you, board. Again, thank you to every one of you. Thank you for your donations, and thank you for making a positive difference in the lives of our children. So a round of applause, please, for our board. That's all, Madam President. Okay. Do any board members have any comments from district activities? If not, uh, Mrs. Martin, do you have any correspondence? No. And I'll turn it back over to Dr. Z for the high school student advisory report. You bet. Um, I meet quarterly with student leaders, and we ask for volunteers to present to the board. And so tonight, um, Sarah and Tyler will come up and present on the high school activities, things that are going on in the school. And if you have questions, please feel free to ask them because they are super smart and super engaged. And again, just let me know when I, I got to keep sliding up. Okay. Ready? Start. Yeah. So uh, up first, we have what uh, student council has been doing this year. Uh, their first event was the. Uh, fall uh, pep rally, which had the uh, homecoming escort dance choreographed by Sarah herself. Uh, for those of you who have seen it, it's a, it's a sight to see. Uh, and for those of you who haven't seen it, I wouldn't suggest looking for it because I'm in it and I'm not the greatest dancer. <laughs> uh, their next event was the uh, Halloween dress up event. Uh, up there you can see all the winners. Uh, those students receive gift cards and it's just a fun event put on by student council to kind of get school participation up, and it, uh, it really worked this year. And then uh, the next event was Powder Puff, also put on by Student Council. Uh, Powder Puff's really fun event where they uh, take a group of juniors and seniors, girls, to play a flag football game. Seniors won uh, again this year. Uh, I, I didn't have a big part in it, but I'd like to take the victory as my own. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, NHS this year, this whole year they've been uh, raising money in order to fund their Shop of the Buckskin event. Some of the fundraisers were the car wash, the coffee house, uh, purse bingo. Car wash especially made a lot of money. I think it was over $1,000 to go to Shop of the Buckskin. Uh, in total, they raised thousands to uh, support over 60 Buckskins. And uh, that was a great event this year. Students had a lot of fun. Uh, First year without mass. You can see Lincoln and Gotham up there. I was that was my favorite duo. They were they were really happy together. Uh, and it was just a really fun day. See all the kids buy presents for their family and uh, and themselves that they couldn't buy without the help of everybody in NHS. So Women's Liberation Alliance is a fairly new club. It was started by Jaden Stokes two years ago. Um, one of their newer initiatives started last year is the Period Pal. 
Um, they sell stickers, Women's Liberation Alliance stickers, and with that money, they fund um, menstrual products that they'll stock up in the girls' bathrooms. So if you're if ever like in an emergency, you need something, it'll be there for you, and they stock every month. They're also very active on Instagram. They'll post Women of the Month this year, or um, for December, they chose Masa Amini, and they give in informational blurbs about the women and why they chose them. So next we have Power, um, People Welcoming and Empowering Race. Uh, that's, that's my club, I'm the president. And we had our senior sunrise this past October where we bought donuts and hot chocolate and we invited the seniors. It's kind of um, just a time that they have to hang out with their friends. They just come in early and they get donuts and there was music playing and everyone said they had a good time. So we enjoyed putting that on. Are you doing the senior sunset? Yeah, we plan to do senior sunset later in the year. So uh, this past month, Power and WLA co um, combined to have our first movie night, and we chose The Hate You Give. Ad admissions were free. We sold concessions, and they went towards both of our clubs, so we had a really great time putting that on. Uh, next, we have Savers Students to Constructive Decisions, which I'm a uh, president of. Uh, we kicked the year off with the bonfire. Uh, we had a switch over of kind of like who ran it, but it ran really smooth this year. Uh, I feel like we all worked really well together, especially administration. They were really helpful and uh, helped us put it together. <coughs> I love the bonfire. It's a great community event uh, that a lot of people show up to and really enjoy, especially the fireworks at the end. I was That was fun to see. Uh, and then recently, Sad and Power combined to have a drink of the season where we give cookies and hot chocolate to everybody before they go out for Christmas break. And it just, uh, it lifts the spirits of everybody. And it was a really good event this year. SAD has a, has a lot of Christmas decorations and powers. Um, Power had informational stands, informational tables that highlighted other cultural celebrations around that time. So that was kind of how we combined with SAD to work on this. We had a really good time. So the Conestoga Valley Drama Department, recently, um, a couple months ago, they put on Puffs, which is kind of like a parody of the Harry Potter movies. So they all said that they had a really fun time doing that, and now they're starting their production of The Music Man, which should be playing, I think, early April is when the spring musical plays. The TSA. So this year, they've been um, raising money by selling concessions at the football games for their state conference. And every year they have the light shows. They weren't able to this year because of construction at the middle school, but they're looking forward to starting that up again next year. So, yeah, that was them selling concessions at the football games with Mr. Miller. Finally, we have the Real Rowdies, which is our student section at the football games. Um, the photos taken in this next slide is from a student photographer, Caleb Malari. So we always have themes, and there's a lot of energy and a lot of fun. And these are just some photos from the 2022-2023 basketball season. <coughs> That's all. Any questions for the... There's a lot of things going on in the high school besides reading, writing, and arithmetic. Yeah. <coughs> Dr. C, I was going to ask Sarah to talk about one other thing. Sarah, do you want to talk about the partnership with McCaskey and what you're trying to do for the spring? Yes. So um, we're working with McCaskey's Black Student Union. We want to put on an international night. Uh, it's going to be later in the year. We're aiming towards late April. So the idea is we have a lot of like small businesses in Lancaster, and, um, and we have, like, we represent different countries, different regions in the world, and McCaskey's Black Student Union has been very, very collaborative, and they've been amazing to work with. So we're really looking forward to doing that. Awesome. You're both yeah. seniors? Yes, we're both seniors. Yeah. Well, we'll see you at graduation. Yeah. We look forward to it. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> How many more days yet? Are we are we in are we in countdown yet? No, yeah. not yet. Okay. Uh, okay. So okay. I still got a whole story in a couple of days. Yeah. I still have to take physics. I still have to get through that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from the board? Thank, Thank you, you. and we wish you both loads of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Uh, our next presentation is from our SRO uh, officer. Uh, officer Werner, there you are. They're hard to follow. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I am Officer John Werner. I'm a police officer with East Lampeter Township Police and uh, currently assigned as your school resource officer. Just a, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm, I have 24 years with the East Lampeter Township Police Department. Uh, this is not my first rodeo as a school resource officer. I was assigned back in 2014 to 17 as the school resource officer, and uh, I'm back here again. I'm also um, a county cert crisis negotiator. I've been a field uh, training officer with the police department, a defensive tactics instructor. Back in all the way back in 2008, I was a DARE instructor, a DARE officer, um, and I'm a former high school and middle school teacher. What do you teach? Social studies. Is there anything else to teach? Yes. You're talking to English and math both up here. What I meant to say was uh, uh, just social studies, that's all. <laughs> um, my, my duties as the school resource officer can be divided <clears throat> into three uh, categories. I, there's activities that I do, um, incidents that I investigate, and I also enhance school safety. Uh, some of the activities uh, that I do as the school resource officer, I, I currently have a law enforcement club at the high school. Uh, in order to kick it off, um, I took a taser shot for the for the class. I wouldn't recommend it. I don't think I'll repeat it. Um, to generate some interest in in law enforcement and public safety, um, my lieutenant for some reason couldn't wait to, to hit me with it. <laughs> there were a lot of smiles. Yeah. By your colleagues on that one. Yeah. Th there was a video there for a while. I'm not sure exactly what happened. To I you. have. Oh. <laughs> That's not part of the presentation. No, no. I was about told I was supposed to keep it brief. Yeah. Um, I also assist with the driver's education with uh, the graduated driver's license in the young driver's law. Uh, I also contribute to uh, community helpers at Leola Elementary. Uh, we I also help out with bonfires, football games, homecoming dances. These aren't the only activities I'm involved in. It's not a comprehensive list, but just to give you an idea. Our, our goal is to have the SR more proactive than reactive. And you got to talk a little bit about frisks. I happen to be with um, Michelle today, walking around the building, and she mentioned the, the programs that you're setting up over there. Well, it, uh, since uh, since I got started at, at the beginning at the beginning of the year, unfortunately, my role has been more as a cipher. I've been investigating a lot of different incidents that have taken a considerable amount of time, and now that things are starting to level off. Um, one of the things that I would like to do as the, the sheriff of the community is to be able to be more engaged with the community, not just acting as a prison guard during lunchtime. So um, with the help of some of the elementary school principals, uh, we're going to start to, uh, I went to a class, it's not quite there, it's not specifically geared towards drug education, but it gives me an opportunity to get into the classroom with curriculum that's specifically designed, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for um, everywhere from kindergarten all the way up to high school. So uh, giving me an opportunity to get into the classrooms, I get to know some of the students and become a part of the community here rather than just someone that's standing on the outside. Uh, some of the incidents that I've investigated, uh, this is a, this is a list of, a graph of incidents from uh, 2021, the calendar year beginning January to December. So 2021, there were 14 arrests out of 169 incidents at the high school, uh, one arrest at the middle school for 47 incidents. And I'll talk about the incidents here in a second. Uh, for 2022, there were 10 high school arrests for 156 incidents and one arrest at the middle school for 50 incidents. We go to the next slide. Now, all the incidents that are listed in that particular graph aren't necessarily, excuse me, aren't necessarily uh, crime-related incidents. There's other incidents that are included in there, such as alarms, ambulance calls, information reports, assisting other agencies. Um, the arrests that uh, are made, the crime that occurs on campus, are 
small in comparison to everything that happens uh, as a whole. School safety. I've recently had the opportunity, um, and not just because I'm on the CERT team, uh, the county CERT team is putting on a, a patrol class, a 3D class for um, response to active shooters. After everyone's had an opportunity to see the video from uh, Ovalde, Texas, and the lack of a police response, uh, the officers here in the county don't want to see that repeated here. So uh, basically what that means is uh, as the school resource officer, probably I'm going to be the only one they'll be responding initially. So we trained for that. Uh, and they put me in a situation where I had to be the lone responder uh, going up against um, one of the CERT team members that uh, had uh, what we call simunition rounds. It's basically a paintball bullet that they shoot you with. The only protection I have is uh, goggles, eyeglasses, and I'm going into the room by myself. So with that kind of training, um, I'm completely confident that uh, of all these not going to happen here. I'm also an ALICE uh, certified instructor. Um, I think here at uh, CB we call it something else. We call it RBI, Response to Violent Intruders, um, and it, by some other name, basically the same thing. Um, but uh, uh, throughout my day, I also make sure that I get to the schools to do perimeter checks to make sure the doors are closed and locked. Not so much of an issue here as it's cold uh, during the winter and into the spring, but once it starts to get warmer, uh, to make sure that everything is secure. Uh, and a part of my duties is to bring other patrol officers from the police department into the buildings so they're also familiar with the layout and it wouldn't be a surprise should there be a critical incident. And uh, even though the Brownstown is not in your the jurisdiction, you work closely with, with the folks out there. I have some friends that are uh, officers with the West Earl Police Department. It gets a little sticky with the jurisdictional lines that Brownstown is kind of out there in West Earl and everything else is in East Lampeter or Upper Lake Dock Township. Uh, but uh, I have a good working relationship with that police department and um, so that I, I don't necessarily need to run code license irons to get to Brownstown. Uh, they will respond initially and uh, we work in cooperation. That's my contact information. Um, if you have any questions, Officer Warner, I have two quick questions. Yes, sir. You mentioned you were, uh, I think it was 2014 to 2017. Yes, sir. What were some of the changes that you saw when you came back in the second time around? Um, I can. I had a conversation with my, my boss, was a school resource officer. And back when he was a school resource officer, it seemed to be you'd have your um, basic incidents, there'd be thefts, fights, drug-related offenses. Now there's a lot more that's happening digitally. Um, unfortunately, everybody has a smartphone, computer, cell phone, and it's making my job a lot more complicated. Uh, with the, some of the incidents that I've had to investigate here at the beginning of the year, I've had to become very adept in uh, um, open source intelligence and uh, cybercrime. Um, I've had to get a lot of help from the detective division because uh, it's been very time consuming. That's been the biggest change so far, sir. And one other quick question. I noticed the number of incidents and arrests are very similar from 21, 22, and 22, 23. But are you seeing any trends that concern you in, in the type of incidents or any particular behaviors that concern you, even though the numbers are relatively the same? Well, um, unfortunately, it all seems to be related to uh, social media. Yeah. There seems to be no, uh, no borders, uh, I guess, would be the best way to describe it. Uh, when it comes to just about everybody having a smartphone and everybody being able to comment and say whatever they want to say over the internet, sometimes it doesn't translate very well once it comes to the school community. And um, being able to establish some kind of etiquette, I guess is the best way to put it, uh, has been a little bit difficult. And um, <laughs> it, it makes it a little more difficult for me 
it, because there, there's an extreme disconnect between what the kids know how to do, what the parents think they're doing, and our ability to keep up. A, a lot of their uh, the, the use of, of uh, the internet is developed before they get to high school. So I would assume that if we want to address <coughs> proper use, etiquette, whatever. We need to do that much earlier than high school. Am I right there? Yes, ma'am. So where do we start? Well, with uh, some of the discussions I've had here with the elementary schools, um, that would be something that we'd be able to address in two ways. Uh, one, we'd be able to have a, a kind of a lesson for the kids in class that I would be able to teach and uh, to have some kind of parents night after school to be able to bring the parents in. These are the trends that we see when it comes to social media, some of the apps that are out there that might um, be a little abstract when it comes to the parents. I've heard of it, but I would, I've never actually used them myself and um, give them an education. Um, that way it reduces my caseload that the parents are at least aware of some of the things that are going on. So you think parents need to be a, a big part of it. I know I, I've gone to a couple sessions on, on this and found that I didn't understand half of what the presenter was trying to explain. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of them didn't. It, these are usually, um, these sessions are usually run by people that, that are very adept at various websites and such that probably most people never even heard of. But I think maybe we need to look into how, not that our elementary schools don't have enough to do, sure. but to be able to incorporate this somehow. And if we can get the parents on board, I would think most of them would welcome it because they really feel, I think, sometimes helpless. They're not, they think that they know they're doing the best they can, but they don't know that, you know, they know everything they need to know. So maybe this is something we need to bring up and, and try to get into our schedule. But we really appreciate uh, having you in the building, so for as long as we've had SROs, uh, we've had nothing but good experiences, and we really uh, are indebted to the East Lampier Police for uh, cooperating with us in this. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, this is the part of the uh, agenda where we have public comments for any issues related to an agenda item. Is there anyone who would like to uh, address any of those issues at this time? We, yes. Uh, would you please come up and um, we have a, we are still pending revision of our uh, policy 903, but uh, so you need not give you your address, but could you please give us your name for our records, please? Sure. It's Alyssa Martin. And could you uh, verify that you're a resident of CBA? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. Um, so please sit down, uh, be comfortable, okay. please. So I had planned to come tonight and I checked the agenda, but then so what I want to talk about is the policy 123 that you talked about last um, agenda. Would, that would you mind to... if we put that at the end of our agenda? It's, it's a short agenda this evening. It, it simply keeps us a little more that organized. That is fine. I, just, Thank I you. didn't notice it on there, but I thought the first yeah. reading would be this week, and so I just wanted to... Oh, I understand. Okay, yeah. well, we, we will get back to that. Thank okay. you so much. Is there anyone else on an agenda item? I just wanted to... Do the same thing that she's doing. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm Sherry Ross. Um, I'm okay. a resident and a parent. I just wanted to also piggyback on what she's saying at the end. Would I have time to also comment? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Everyone will have time to okay. comment. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Is there anyone else? Are there any any comments from CBEA? I'm not even sure where to find anyone right now. Is there someone here? Mm -hmm. I guess not. Or other employee groups. If not, then we will get to the business part of our agenda. We have the consent agenda, items A through R, which are routine or, or, or that uh, we have already discussed last week. Are there any questions on this yes. before we take a motion? Yes. Mrs. Trowbridge. Um, item I, the postage meter purchase agreement. Yes. Um, I I didn't know that we went over that. Is that it's, it's considered routine? But we'll explain it if you'd like. I, I don't. Yeah, uh, our current postage meter agreement expires the end of this month, so we have to get a new postage meter. 
uh, we looked at lease versus purchase options, and this is going to be a purchase option, several thousand dollars cheaper. But it's something we maintain all the time down here. And it's it's a five year agreement. Yes. Is that what yes. I we purchased the machine, then we have a five year maintenance agreement to maintain it for any um, any breaks or needed repairs. Mm -hmm. And I had a quick question just for a verification on uh, item J. Uh, we get the more specific list later <coughs> in the process. Is that I right? I can provide you a specific list uh, and executive content. Um, what I gave you was the summary. We just only received the, the information from the Tax Collection Bureau late this afternoon. Yeah. I can provide you with the detail. List but usually we don't get it until it's gone farther in the process. Am I right? Yes. I, I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Any other questions? If um, not, I... Item yes. K. The item arbiter. K. Arbiter? Yes. We discussed that last week, didn't we? Uh, that is, yes. a, that is a, a routine agreement with... Um, scheduling for athletics, and then there's an arbiter pay that is for the payment of officials through arbiter. So that is a that's a system that is used throughout the Lancaster, Lebanon League. Um, it expires, and that's why we're doing a new agreement. Okay. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through R. I move we accept the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion in section. May we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Bidding Aye. Mr. Dillman? Aye. Mrs. Kapka? Aye. Mr. Town? Aye. Dr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Trowbridge? Aye. Mrs. Groff? Aye. Uh, on to our action and discussion agenda. Dr. Mann, I think you are up first with the new course selection booklet. Yeah. Yeah, usually this exit comes much sooner. You've all been very, very patient. <laughs> yes, they have. All right, well, good evening, and I everyone. I always warn people that I do take names no matter what they told you. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Dr. Mann. All right, well, good evening. Um, what I have for you tonight is, is um, some of the updates to our course selection booklet at the high school. Uh, last week, I presented to you new courses that we were recommending uh, to be included in this, and you'll see them in here, but also some other um, um, edits, additions, um, and so I have a summary sheet here for you to, so it could be hard to find them on and try and figure out all that. So then, if you would, I'll just walk through these uh, rather quickly. So the first um, edition is Act 158, which is the graduation requirements, the pathways that students need to follow uh, one of the pathways, in, in, uh, which is related to the Keystone exams. So that's that. The English um, editions are the uh, courses I, I talked about last week, with the addition of the putting a general level in for the media 21st century uh, course. No additions in the social studies course uh, this year. We have two courses that we're removing from the science department. Um, the lack of interest, um, not fitting into, and we've had that over the years where you know, things just come and go, kind of ebb and flow, and so, so uh, those guys come out. Uh, the dual enrollment um, for computer science, um, which is the computer science three. I did check with the teacher uh, remember last week about the uh, PC uh, preferred, mm -hmm. and she said that while it says that, they actually have two kids piloting right now using their iPads, and yeah. it's working really well. Oh, so, okay. Yeah. So yeah. I did it. They I did reach know. out to her. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Uh, world language, uh, just a removal of French six. Um, business. Changes in titles. The the it should say marketing at the end of recreation there. That's missing. Technology, family, consumer science, music, art, uh, physical education. No changes. Um, update in special services under ESL. The virtual academy. Uh, we added um, twelve virtual options and. What this is meaning is giving our students more opportunities for electives that mirror our, our classes. You know, well, they are our classes, but now they're done offered virtually. So um, as um, Mrs. Upton continues to look at how to expand that program and giving students other opportunities, you know, it's, it's um, taking those courses and, and you know, making them now virtual. For example, um, last year we had a new course, African American Studies. 
So now we're offering that virtually as well. We didn't before, now we can. So it's, it's that type of thing. We're taking courses that we have and we're expanding on them and allowing it to uh, function within our virtual academy. And there are other examples of that, but uh, that's one example of what that looks like. Um, and expanded learning opportunities, um, remove the college enrichment, uh, dual enrollment, you have other opportunities there, and updated the dual enrollment section. You know, just again, cleaning it up. It's always uh, amazing how each year we do this, and you find different edits and things that, that you just need to clean up um, and um, make a little clearer. That's the extent of that. That is it. That is it. Mm -hmm. I, I'd be interested at some point in, in getting uh, some sort of feedback as to uh, the mix of our students that are full-time in-person, mm -hmm. full-time virtual, and especially those that are blended. I think that's really interesting because, uh, as you say, we often adjust our curriculum to suit what our kids want, not right. just what we know they need. And uh, it, it seems to me we're... I know a few students that are doing this, but it seems to me we're getting more and more that do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, that, that impacts facilities, that impacts faculty, that impacts the training that our teachers right. need to, to right. be able to, to handle that. So uh, I'd be interested in seeing where we are now, maybe even compared to just, you know, maybe two years ago, sure. not last year, but how, how fast that those right. changes are coming so that we're ready for it. Right. I know, uh, I think Mrs. Upton's scheduled to present to you in April or May. Okay. So, um, and she's here. So we can include that as part of that presentation. Okay. yeah. Um, but yeah. But the, I think we need to be prepared to make sure that our hires and our offerings are mm -hmm. you know, what's going to interest these kids the most for what they want to do. Oh, absolutely, because, you know, teaching online is not the same as teaching no, in person. It's not. I mean, you know, we learned a lot of that through the, the pandemic and all the, the struggles that, that people um, um, encountered, you know, thinking well, that they were ready. One of the few advantages of that <clears throat> pandemic was the ability to give our staff the training <clears throat> to be able to do this on a much faster uh, schedule than we right. had been planning. But right. that, that definitely ended up, and it gave kids a chance to find, to experiment with right. different kinds of learning. And some of them found out they're not really very good with online, and some found that it suits them well. Right. And that if they like what they're doing, they're more likely to stick it out. Absolutely, yeah. Good. And I have always believed that, you know, it's, it's not the two extremes, not all virtual, not you know, it doesn't necessarily have to all be in person, but yeah. finding that middle ground of what meets needs. And you were, no, you were in at the ground floor when we started trying to do anything virtual. Yeah. <laughs> so. Are there any questions for board members? No, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Good evening. Mrs. Schaefer. Good evening. The counseling services. Good evening. Yes, I wanted to uh, review with all of you another resource that we're going to be adding to our school-based mental health counseling availability in the district. So I don't think you're all familiar with what school-based mental health counseling is, so I'm just going to give you a brief explanation of, of, of what that service is. Um, it's been around for about 12, 13 years, and uh, they are private counseling agencies that put together um, a, a, a way to serve students as professional counselors to go to them. And the best way to find kids is to go to them in school. Um, so what professional counselors were finding is it was very hard to bring families in after school and the resources weren't there. So they, they went to schools and they said, we are, we are willing to do school-based mental health counseling as you provide us the, the, the office space and we will come to you and we'll provide that service to those students. So since um, probably about 12 years ago, most school districts have some sort of agreement with a school-based mental health counselor. And we do currently, we have it with Panessa, and they're, they're located in all of our buildings and they provide that, that service to our, to our families in the community. What the drawback to that is, is that they only serve students that have access insurance. So families that would like to use private pay insurance can't access that. So that's always, that's always been a challenge. So Smoker Counseling has agreed to only do private pay insurance for students that are, and families that are looking into this counseling, school-based mental health counseling. So this is gonna be a, a real nice addition to our district to be able to, to not only serve the students that have access insurance, but also um, allow the kids that have private pay insurance to be able to access that, 
that that service for? I'm not sure if all the board members are familiar with the access program. Well, that's complicated. Well, I know, but <laughs> it's so complicated. I'm sorry. Just quickly, it is and a it is a state funded program um, for insurance. And if you have an identified need to be able to act to get that insurance, you can get an access card. Anyone is able to do that if they meet a number of criteria, um, but many families just want to use their private pay insurance for a number of reasons, and they don't want to go through access to, to use the insurance. And as a footnote, had all the problems that we had previously with access been pretty well ironed out and aren't coming back to haunt us? You mean the reimbursement for access? Yeah. Yeah, we're doing good with that. Okay. That's, that's yeah, there, there was a real well. problem, like, two years ago? Yeah. Yep, and we're we good. were really behind in, in, in getting our, our reimbursement. A number of school districts settled for less than what they were owed just to get something. Yep, we're generating, we are, we're generating money, okay. and we are using that money in our special education and it's running smoothly programs. Now. Yep, oh, thank we goodness. are. So SMOKER is the, the uh, proposal, SMOKER Counseling. There is no cost associated with it for us. We just provide a location. Um, the parents decide whether um, they, they're going to go through with a referral for counseling in the school through that agency or whether they would want to use Panessa, and we just provide an office location. Was this competitive, or how did we choose this particular one? Um, counselors in the area talk. And I would say really? that, yes, <laughs> there, it's, 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 like I said, it's been frustrating that the school-based mental health agencies that, that have this program only accept access. And I, I don't know all the business behind it. I'm not going to pretend that I do. It's probably reimbursement. I don't, okay. I guess. So um, we have known that we have a hole in a, a giving a service to, the, to families and students that have private pay insurance and would like to access something like this. So the counselors have been talking back and forth, um, and this is the only group, a that's private true. group, that has oh. said that, you know, that's, it's like they, these private groups are not at the same level as, let's say, a Pandessa or a PA counseling, because that's a very corporate counseling okay. group. Yeah. And when you have smaller practices like this, they have never thought about providing services in a school-based service before. So when we talked with them and said, is this, is this something that you'd like to do? I don't know that it's been done before anywhere else. So we did review this with our attorney, with our solicitor, yeah. and uh, we put together this agreement, and um, we're going we're gonna to go with that. Are we able to maintain the appropriate level of uh, confidentiality, although it's in a school setting? Yes. So we follow the same procedures that um, any corporate counsel, school-based counseling would um, follow. So it's the same confidentiality. It's the same access to services. Um, it, we're basically offering the office space, and then they can do their counseling privately with the family. Just done during the school day. Just, it's, we're just giving them the space during the school day. Any other questions? Yeah, Smoker, are they from Lancaster yes. County? Yes. Okay. So I've not heard of it. I will be totally upfront and honest. My daughter fell into that empty category last mm -hmm. year, and we ended up going to Smoker. Okay. So I can fully vouch for their, they've been great. Yes. They've been great. So it'll be really cool to have the opportunity for her now to have um, some services yeah. in school. And they're, they're a local group. They're very excited to come serve Constantica Valley. A lot of the uh, therapists, the counselors that work there are, um, are parents. Mm -hmm. And in order to counsel, they would like to do the counseling during the school day because often counseling happens after school. Mm -hmm. So they, are, they think this is a great model, a great program to get into. So we think we're going to be able to extend it. We're going to start at the high school. And then as we get this going, we want to broaden it out through all of our buildings. Jennifer's great. Yeah, she is. <laughs> Glad you could vouch. Yeah, well, we look forward to getting a report on how well it's going if you want to extend yep, it. Absolutely. Do you need approval tonight? Yes. Okay. Are we done with questions? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. I move that we approve the, the smoke over there. Second. I don't think this is. It's not for oh, you're right. No, you're right. It is for approval. I'm sorry. Hmm? I, I, it's a, should we just. Uh, Okay, we have a motion. Second. second. And a second. May I have a roll call vote, please? <clears throat> Mr. Dillman? Aye. Mrs. Kapka? Aye. Mr. Talley? Aye. Dr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Trowbridge? Aye. Mr. Benigno? Aye. Mrs. Groff? Aye. There you go. Thank you. Thank you.
Mrs. Hunsinger, the next two agenda items are yours. So the first item is a request to increase the um, employee mileage reimbursement rate. We've had several people request us lately to increase our rate up to the IRS rate. Uh, for whatever reason, back about 2008, 9 or so, we froze that reimbursement rate at like 45 cents per mile, and now the IRS rate is 65 and a half cents. So. And I did check that uh, our policies don't specify the amount. So Correct. really. Uh, we should be updating it yes. more, more regularly. I don't remember freezing it. Excuse that, me? I don't remember freezing it. I think that was before your that, time. Is that before my time? Yeah, Freeze. that was back in the 2008, 9, 10 well, time know. frame when we had that recession and we're looking ah, at cutting. Okay. And everything cracks. was going down. So, you know, yeah, yeah. in a way, we froze it so it wouldn't drop too low. Right. Do you want to have it where we adjust it every year to the IRS? Mm -hmm. Well, or? our policy says we follow the federal guidelines, yes. and that does, I think, adjust mm -hmm. every year. That's fine. Yes. So okay. we, yes. need, we need to go back to that model. All right, yeah. once you approve the IRS, well, right? this, we follow the IRS. Mm -hmm. Fine. Yeah. Good. So if you consent, would you like to go on now? Uh, consent is fine? Or for fine? next month? Yeah. It doesn't you want it to be approved now. Right you want it to be approved now? now? Oh, yeah, yes. It's on the, it's on the agenda. It's the, uh, uh, item. the IRS policy presented. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Can we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Capco? Aye. Mr. Talley? Aye. Dr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Trowbridge? Aye. Mr. Benigno? Aye. Mr. Dillman? Aye. Mrs. Groff? Aye. Next okay. item. Next item is I'm going to request your approval this evening for an agreement with the with IU13. So um, you approved our new HR supervisor. Uh, she'll be starting with us on February 13th. Um, however, <laughs> Everybody's happy about it. I'm very happy about it, believe me. Um, however, we're going to have a gap in our HR department without any coverage for about three to four weeks. So I reached out to the IU, and they gave us the agreement here to provide support for all aspects of HR. They actually, pending approval this evening, are going to meet with me for a couple hours tomorrow and start getting an understanding of what our needs are and how we have things laid out. Our HR generalist submitted her resignation, which you approved, mm -hmm. effective this Friday. Yeah, yeah. And I also on the agenda has noted um, an agreement with TriStar. We put that in as a placeholder, but the uh, in case we needed to reach out to them for an HR person, but the IU was able to scoop everything into one agreement for us. Okay. Any questions? I, I will make note of one thing. Mm -hmm. This uh, HR position is one that Dr. Z brought in, and it didn't take long before both administrators and staff saw the difference. Mm -hmm. And as soon as that went away, it was a panic. Yeah. It has been a, a great change in, in how things were managed. Mm -hmm. yes. Big advantage. Yes. Okay, this also needs a... Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I have one quick question. Yes, I'm absolutely. sorry, I was looking through it and I couldn't find it. Is this agreement time bound? Um, it doesn't have an end date on it. It is temporary. We can terminate it like with any time we want, basically. But our intent okay. is only to take this for about four weeks okay. at the most. Okay. We'd be in, uh, we, we would be told if for some reason it had to be extended. Correct, yes. Yes. Okay. Do I have a motion or... Do, um, I, I move that we accept the agreement with the IU. Okay, thank you. Second. I'm going to have a roll call. Sorry, who was second? Oh, Mr. Andrew. Benigno. <coughs> Mr. Talley. Aye. Dr. Martin. Aye. Ms. Trowbridge. Aye. Mr. Benigno. Aye. Mr. Gilman. Aye. Mrs. Kafka. Aye. Mrs. Groff. Aye. Oh, don't go away. I have oh. a quick question to sure. follow up. Uh, it, it, it's not exactly related to this, but I noticed something in the, the notices I've been getting about changing the uh, procurement threshold. Does that have yes. to do with bids or? Yes, yes, with bids and quote. Every January, uh, the bid or quote threshold is increased, and I can't give you the exact amount off the top 22 of my head. 22.5. Yeah, 22.5. <laughs> anything over that, we have to go out for bid unless we can find that item or those services on one of the state cooperative uh, purchasing contracts. And then in anything below the 22.5, starting at like probably 12 something, yeah. we have to get quotes on. We don't have to go out for bid. I, I wasn't sure 
I want little I saw if that was for, for bids or if that was for the threshold where we have to approve. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any comments or questions from the finance and operations report? From the curriculum and instruction report? Federal funds, Dr. Z. Yes. Oh, good. For a change. Dr. Cozer? Yes, federal funds. Just a quick update for the board that um, Concert Valley was selected for ARP ESSER monitoring, so our last round of ESSER funding. So we will be taking a one week um, during the week of February 13th. Well, it's a great way to spend Valentine's Day That's week lovely. together in the business <laughs> office. Um, it will be a virtual monitoring visit, but they're basically um, providing guidance on the processes, procedures, procurement guidelines um, that we're using on those ESSER funds. So just oh, this is not this more. is not an audit of the use of the funds. This Correct. is more of a training. Oh, okay. Correct. Yep. That is coming up next month. Anything else for sure? No, ma'am. All right, for uh, board reports, uh, the IU, um, in addition to what I posted, you may know had a, uh, a small flood. Uh, the entire center of the building in Lebanon and the um, elevator shaft and the rooms around it were completely flooded and some of the, some of the outer rooms were damaged. Uh, and much like what we found when we had a problem uh, the people in Lebanon stepped up, and, and those kids are all being, uh, being being serviced now. But I just wanted, in case you read about you know some sort of disaster mm -hmm. at the IU, that's exactly what it was. Uh, for PSBA, uh, hopefully you all got and read this issue. If you don't get it, you need to let me know, and I'll make sure they get it mm -hmm. to you. Uh, I did not post a um, a PSBA report because, quite frankly, I have no idea what's happening up there. Uh, you may have noticed that you got uh, an email telling you that the daily edition was disappearing, and now they have, let me say, a Monday, Wednesday, Friday morning brief, a Tuesday countdown, which is a video edition, and a Thursday PSBA works for you, and quite frankly, I've not been able to tell the difference between them all. It's just you never know if you're getting education information, and there's no calendar of PSBA activities. Other than that, I know they're having an um, advocacy day in April, if anyone's interested in participating in that. It is interesting to go to Harrisburg for that, if anybody wants to do it. And they're pushing, pushing instead of MSBA, which we no longer belong to, it's called COSSBA, that's in March. Uh, for three days in Tampa, Florida, if anyone thinks they really want to go to Tampa, Florida. Um, other, other than that, they really haven't told me a lot. They're changing so many. Th the people were in a different uh, region, and now they have yet three different kinds of regions we belonged in. We have a separate um, advocacy region. So for right now, I will monitor as best I can, but they're not giving me a calendar so much as what I get, you get. And I don't know if you're having a problem identifying that as the PSBA uh, replacement or not, but I just wanted you to know that I I'm trying to f figure it all out. It's just not easy to follow what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, uh, the um, I'll move on to the Lancaster County Academy. Uh, we've already graduated five people, one of them from CV. Uh, we have several more uh, on the waiting list that we expect to graduate this year. They're constantly expanding. We've added two more school districts that once left us and have now come back, at least as a, as a half-time member and one full-time member. So we're growing back into uh, relevancy. And uh, as you know, we, we have two locations now. Uh, where we are, we're le we've lost our lease because the... Uh, the college there is, is closing. Yep. So we're back going to be going back to Hack. Uh, the only good thing is that we'll be using maybe a little less space and we're not going to be paying as much as we were back in the day when we mm -hmm. had the other space. So financially, we're, we're still in, in fine shape. <coughs> and I think that covers mine. Um, we have no one here to do the, the uh, CTC. The CTC, unless you know anything that's going on there that we should know. 
Um, no, we just passed the budget, so we'll just make sure you sign your check your yes and hand that back to Marilyn and she'll get it over to the CTC. Yeah, and, and please do consider um, the notice you have about the uh, legislative breakfast. Yes, it's been a while since mm -hmm. uh, the IU did it. Uh, I'm hoping they'll be able to get it more vibrant again and we'll actually get legislators there, not just a bunch of aides filling the seat. That, mm -hmm. The only limitation is it's a, a limited to six board members, seven per district, seven total per district. Oh, say that again. Only seven people per district are allowed to attend. Only seven people per district? Yes. Because of where they're having it. Okay, they hadn't told us that. Well, we can fight over that, folks. You know, we're going to be in seven. And if oh. we don't have enough board members, I have cabinet members that would love to Oh, attend. okay. Well, it, it, I know some of you can't make a breakfast, but uh, it's usually it's usually interesting. I didn't know they limited it. <clears throat> Somebody has to keep me up to date too. Um, is that all of our construction? Our, oh yes, construction. Mr. Kendall, this is always a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> If you're bringing me good news, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Um, so quickly, with the uh, starting out with the middle school, uh, the concentration there is first of all the, to complete punch list deficiency items. Um, all contractors are working on that. Two of the two of the areas for completion uh, have to do with flooring uh, in the um, ox gym and the. Um, and the uh, health area. That flooring is to start uh, this Thursday in the Ox Gym first, is the information that I have. Uh, they, have they had hoped to start it sooner, uh, trying to get make sure that the moisture content and the con concrete is in the proper levels to be able to put that type of flooring down. Mm -hmm. um, the fair weather has afforded uh, a couple things to happen outside that weren't expected. One of them one of the bigger things is the um, is concrete work in the uh, in the arts courtyard. They were able to it's not completed, but they were able to knock a lot of that out and some and some uh, markings and striping on the uh, on the playground area. Uh, but again, the um, the punch list is being pushed through. The punch list and efficiency items are being worked on and pushed through. Um, questions on the middle school. Oh, I'm sorry, I, sh I do want to add that when I said flooring, um, uh, the wood floor is another big item in the, in the, in the gymnasium, of course. Uh, that has not been delivered. The, 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 the um, environment in there is, is established and, and in condition that it can be installed. Now they're working to get the delivery of the, mm -hmm. of the material itself. Is it best to wait until different weather climate to, to, to do that, or are they covered? Well, it's in, it's it's all controlled. Controlled, yeah. yeah it's, it's controlled inside. The well, I know they so. often say that. That doesn't mean it isn't sometimes still humid or moist yeah. or whatever. Well, I'll leave it to them. They're supposed to know what you're doing. Um, the um, smoke town um, is moving along nicely the, 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 as far as the scheduled items. Uh, demolition is, is pretty much knocked out. It's almost complete. Uh, there's some incidental items here and there as they move along, but they've been able to move um, in the sequence of areas A through, through E, actually, and, uh, and have nothing holding them up there. Um, but they start the new work in area A and B, first and second floor, that's the classroom wings. Um, that work is ongoing. Uh, the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing rough-ins. Uh, there's actually masonry work has, has been performed in that area. There is uh, <coughs> stud work that's been performed in that area. There's concrete infills and floors. Uh, but they've also been able to move over to Area C and the Virtual Academy and work on some underground, under slab rough-ins for the plumber. Um, and some additional concrete work and, and masonry work in those areas. Um, right now in A and B, and this one photograph that we just rolled by, uh, most of the area in A and B, you're going to see that type of shoring throughout. They have, uh, they are putting in new walls, new beams, 
uh, new structural supports uh, for the various um, masonry works that gets done above. Uh, mechanical and electrical roughens, as I said, are ongoing in, in frankly, all areas. And that is the uh, smoke down. These questions on that. When's the completion date on smoke down? This, uh, that is uh, put out, well, actually, I have it here to give you an exact date. Uh, we're looking at Feb. Um, February 16th, 2024 is 24. the date that we have in, in the schedule, okay. plugged in the schedule. One more year. All right, one more year. Yeah. And then so one of the cool things as a, as a board is that we have the opportunity to name things. I'm sure we have the opportunity. Just to name oh. buildings. <clears throat> so. Yeah, at some point we do have yeah, to decide I'll, I'll what this building be is going to be called. Yeah. This one. Yeah. <laughs> so just give us some thought. Yeah. Cool opportunity. <laughs> Dr. Z, I would just throw out an encouragement. Before things get covered up, it might be a good field trip opportunity for either CTC or some of our tech classes just to see, you know, all of the HVAC systems, the shoring systems that are used good idea, before right? all that gets covered up again. Anything else? That probably would be preferred at the towards the end of the day, so there's not so much activity, of course, yeah, but it certainly there's right, liability sure. to work through but to, work uh, around yeah. with the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Thank you. Any other reports? Okay, this is the part of the, um, the agenda where we return to public comments uh, for items not on the agenda. Um, those who wanted to speak, I hope you do not consider it rude, but if we don't follow our agenda, we quickly lose control of our meeting. So um, whoever it was started, I don't remember your name. Mrs. If you would, Mrs. Martin? Alyssa Martin. Okay. And we'll I start am again. resident and no problem. Are you speaking for yourself or for a group? I am speaking for myself. Okay. Yes. You may have five minutes to say whatever you sure we need to hear. Okay. Well, I'm still learning how the school board meetings go, and so if I would have known to um, look into each policy, then I would have spoken last week, but I appreciate you hearing me this week. So I'm a mother of three students in the district, and um, broadly, I'm concerned about the fairness of sports um, that my children will be participating in. Uh, more specifically, I want to share my thoughts on policy 123. I didn't see the first reading on the agenda tonight, and you didn't talk about that, but I did listen to, and I appreciated everything that you had to say um, last week. I listened to um, the YouTube recording, which was pretty spotty, but I think I got the gist <laughs> of everything. Um, so I understand that you're taking time to revise the sports elig eligibility policy. Um, today, I just want to implore you to add the words biological at birth male in order to safeguard the integrity of female sports. For me personally, I was a college athlete. I was fortunate to get a small scholarship. And when you're trying to pay for school, everything helps. But there's absolutely no way that I would have received any monies had I been competing against biological males. Another thing that I enjoyed about playing sports was the ability to be competitive and to be rewarded for training, uh, for working hard, and for doing my best. Um, how disheartening and unfair it would have been to be in competition with a man. A biological male who was created to be stronger, faster, leaner, and have more muscle than me. I'm not sure that I would have even had the heart to continue playing. I have two daughters, and it is my hope that they will grow and they will continue to be active and enjoy sports and athletic competition against other biological at-birth females. Do you have daughters or granddaughters? Are you okay with them being at a competitive disadvantage? 
We are at a time in history where people are questioning whether they are male, female, non-binary, cat, whatever. And that may sound absurd, but it is really happening in our world. It's a real thing. Things that weren't previously formal or based upon a general understanding now need to be defined in order to protect our children and the integrity of competitive fairness. If we do not have a strong policy to stand on, it's quicksand at best. In the current um, policy, the responsibility to decide eligibility is on the school principal. But in the meeting, I heard you say that the actual decision-making process is more like a team effort and a case-by-case -case basis. A team effort between the principal, the athletic director, and the superintendent, and the decision is ultimately left to the superintendent. I understand that now you are um, amending the policy to reflect that decision-making process. In the same way, let's clarify the policy to, specific, to specify about biological at birth gender for eligibility. This is not actually a change to the way that we're currently operating as you have said that nobody is, is um, currently in, no females are currently in male sports, no males are currently in female sports. Um, but this would put this suggested framework uh, there and that we could continue to operate that way in the future. I'm just asking that you would please not operate on a case-by-case -case basis for gender eligibility. Please make biological at-birth gender part of your revised policy. I'm asking that you continue to protect our children and help them stand on a firm foundation. Yes, it may be easier to ignore this issue and to just leave everything as is, but rise and make the change because this issue is not going away and it will be even more difficult to live with the results of ignoring it. So, um, yeah, I just, I feel strongly about this and I feel like I could have emailed all of you, um, but I wanted to be a voice that hasn't spoken yet. Um, and I really sincerely appreciate all of your hard work, not just around um, this policy, but just everything that you do for the school and our community and our kids. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you taking the time to come. Uh, there was someone else who asked for sure if they would be able to speak. Yes. Hello? Could you give your name, please, for the record? Elizabeth Rickard. And you are a resident of CV? Yes. You can sit if you're more comfortable. Thank you. I want to thank the board for vote voting to not add discriminatory language to the athletic policy. I appreciate that the board did not change the athletic policy to exclude and illegally discriminate against students who are transgender. I think residents can agree that we want to avoid the risk of costly legal challenges to a policy that excludes cer certain students from accessing activities. More importantly, we want the board to avoid even the appearance of bullying or supporting the bullying of students who experience life differently to what might be considered the norm. Our CV community values of tolerance, respect, courtesy, and caring for our students, no matter their backgrounds, should always lead our decisions. Our students who identify as LGBT plus are valuable members of our CV community, and I hope we can move forward with kindness and respect for all students, educators, and families. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. If I may. Yes. Uh, could you state your name, please? Um, Jean Vickmeyer. I am a resident of okay. Thank you. East Lampeter CV. Um, so, yeah, I just prepared questions or 
statement here. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody brings it on their iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's the way of the world. <laughs> but um, yes, I understood that, uh, and I didn't know about the uh, school board. I haven't. This is, I think, the second time I've been at a school board meeting. So, um, but and I did hear about. Often. What's that? I said you must come more often. <laughs> yes, I should. That's true. Um, policy 123. So um, I was concerned because I um, wasn't, well, I wasn't a student here, but I was a student in school, and I was bullied. And so I'm looking at school policy um, 20, 123 that was proposed, and I see that um, the role of the school board is to prepare students for careers and life beyond graduation. And that means all students. The board is to ensure a safe and positive culture. And how is discrimination <laughs> against certain students who, don't, who we don't believe belong help any of us? School sports is about more than winning. I think it's about teamwork, about overcoming adversity, and uh, you know, understanding each of how, each, how each of us um, contributes our talents and our gifts. So I would pre much prefer that the board concentrate on looking at ascertaining curriculum and looking at the experience of different cultures to see how people may see the world in different ways. What are we doing to help any transgender students that we may have, which I don't think that we even know if we have any right now, but if we were, what are we doing to help transgender students or in fact LGBTQ students or any other students who may be different than the norm? I believe that our students need to understand that there are different perspectives so they can work and be and um, the generate well, be a generations that are empathetic. So our kids don't need to uh, to be don't need, need to be set up to be bullied to be excluded from extracurricular activities. As I said, I was bullied for being shy, and I felt like I wasn't like you know I I kind of kept my head down, didn't want to belong, and I think that was a mistake because it really although. You know, I'm here, I'm here now, and I have overcome that. I had a lot of things in my favor, um, and I know I, this is a very sensitive issue. It's a very sensitive issue and a critical juncture um, for our kids in their formative teenage years. And so I think it's just important to understand where they're coming from. What is this issue? Um, we really don't understand all of it, I think, that's going on. So before we make any sort of big decisions about it, um, I think we need to review that. Um, because the situations need more sensitivity. I would urge the board to consider um, and um, consider this critical juncture carefully. And currently there are no trans students, as I said. And I see looking at each situation, although it may be a compromise, as discriminatory. There it sets it up as a discriminatory policy. So I would urge that you, you basically table this, let the courts decide, um, wait on this issue, and review it more fully. Okay, so, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So anyone else who would like to address the board at this time? Hello. Hi, may we have your name? Hi, yes, I'm Sherry Ross, 69 Linda Avenue, Lancaster, 17602. Okay. I have two you don't daughters. Have to give your Pardon me? You don't have to give your address oh, anymore. I thought we used to. It's just more of where you resident on the district. I, I, that's what I was saying. I we don't do that anymore. I like anymore. that better. That's all right, but that's okay. Just, you know, private information. Yeah. No, if you, don't mind, we, if you don't mind, we don't mind. Yeah. Okay. No, we'll no. We'll be over now for a drink. I know. Well, well come on in. <laughs> no, we won't. We like to have fun, so. No, it's not required. <laughs> oh, that's good. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> um, so, I also want to piggyback um, on the 123 um, uh, I'm not sure what it's called. Board policy. One. And policy. And, and, and thank you. And yes, policy. thank you. I, I wasn't aware of it either, but now that I am aware of it, I just wanted to comment at least to give my opinion. Uh, um, and I just, I don't think that, um, I think that only biological males should play in male sports and teams and only biological females should play in female sports um, for reasons of equal opportunity. I think I have two young daughters, girls. They're very, uh, one of them is very petite. And I, I do know that biological men, uh, males are stronger, usually faster. Um, and that would be harmful possibly if, if one of my girls were in a contact sport with a, with a male. 
Uh, so I'm concerned for safety. I'm concerned for um, fairness, for competition. Um, my girls are pretty competitive. Um, and I think that to be fair, it, it just seems odd that, that a biological male would be <coughs> in, on the same, you know, opposing them or, on, or being on the same team as them. Um, and to maybe they would miss an opportunity and be benched possibly. So that's one of my concerns. Um, safety and then safety. I don't know that they would ever be in locker rooms. Um, and, and I'm not trying to discriminate against, you know, other kids. That's the last thing I want to do. But for fairness and, and for equal opportunity and for safety, I, I mean, that's, we all have to agree, maybe, that those are valid reasons as to why we shouldn't do this, maybe. Um, I, you know, that's just my, my take on it. Um, I just want my girls to have the opportunity to excel. Uh, I excelled in, in school. I went to college on fabulous scholarships because of my merit and, you know, the competitive competition that was there. And um, it's important to be able to, to compete fairly. Um, mine was for other talents and academics, but not necessarily sports. But it would have been a shame had I been benched and not gotten, you know, to have those scholarships. I wouldn't have been able to excel and go to college. My parents sure, certainly never were able to afford that. So um, there's another issue I want. Oh, and at least, I mean, I agree with the, the board to have all three um, persons to approve who is going to be on teams. I, I agree. I hope that we can have the superintendent, the athletics um, director, and the principal um, to approve, have to all approve. I think that's important, not just one person. So, um, and if I have a few more minutes, can I also bring attention um, to a You have two minutes left, so. Okay. It's all um, yours. My daughter is in fourth grade, and maybe it's a mistake that she was able to check this book out in the school library, but I'm concerned about it. She's concerned about it. She brought it to me because she was upset about it. Um, it's a book called Rick, and here's the book here. Um, she got it at Fritz Elementary, and um, like I said, maybe it's a mistake, or maybe we need to have better controls over the... Um, which students can check out which books because um, on page 19 it talks about girls are hotties like sexy pancakes Jeff this the kid the character in the book yeah I'd like to see more of her with her clothes off it's it's right here on page 19 and she's in fourth grade I I don't think that's appropriate um, and I, I'm afraid that there are other books in the library like this one, um, such as a book named George that I'll be reviewing shortly. So I'll bring that to your attention next time. I sent an email about this book to the board members, and I will respond um, to uh, one of the board members that did respond to me. So thank you for that. Um, so that's on page 19. Uh, then, and then it goes on to talk about a lot of... Um, like page, there's some other stuff in here, but on page 127 to 129, it talks about asexual term, intersex term, aromantic term, um, bisexual is in here. And I don't think that those are terms that my daughter in fourth grade at nine years old should be learning and reading about. Um, because they don't even, I don't think CV teaches sex ed until fifth grade. And so why is my fourth grader reading this is my, my question. Um, and even at fifth grade, I'm, I'm a little shady. I, I just, I don't really care to have the kids taught that. But, and then on page 167. Could you slowly finish up at yes. your time? Yes, thank you. Um, there's shaming of children on page 167, labeling kids jerks who don't, believe in the same views as others and values. 
Um, and then on page 174, there's more hatred uh, and talking about fighting against those who don't, don't agree with um, certain values and views. And then page 179, driving it in further, um, talking about people that don't agree with, with certain views um, are homophobes and bullies. If, um, if you will make sure that we have your name and contact number, we will have an administrator that works with us get in touch with you and do the full review. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Time. And just as, a, as an etiquette, if you if somebody emails the entire board, it's always etiquette for the president yeah, to respond. I, I don't know. Oh. I have such an email in my email box, unless yeah. it came late today. So it's not that we're being rude or anything, but oh, no, I we get a lot of to everybody, and just to be on the same page. Sure. Yeah, our, our usual that way is if you yeah. if you email the whole board, <laughs> I use your response so you know that we got it, mm -hmm. and then we forward it to whatever administrator should be addressing that issue. I think Phil Hurst responded. Uh, I don't remember even I, seeing I the email. Seeing it. it was late this afternoon. Oh, well, oh it, was late, afternoon. it was late this afternoon, yeah, I see. Okay. But nonetheless, if you make oh, sure no, we... I sent it days ago. I sent days it on ago? Saturday. I received the email on Saturday, but I did not respond. Okay. Anyhow. That's you, okay. You, you, you will hear... We'll it. If, we, if we have yeah. your contact mm -hmm. information, you will hear from an administrator so you can address this more fully. In the, okay? Okay. Right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board? <clears throat> if not, we have time. Yes. One more. One oh, more. oh, I am <laughs> sorry. I am That's sorry. Right. I am. Um, it keeps sneaking up on me. Kristen Bishop. I am a resident. Okay. Um, I do not have a planned speech. That's I wasn't quite planning all right. on speaking, and I, right. I think that um, I probably. Oh, What's your name? Just for the record. Kristen Bishop. Kristen Bishop. I think I have more questions than I do comments. So please, please, please understand that this is not a town meeting, and we don't take questions, but we make sure that somebody will answer them. For that's you. fine. Okay. Um, I I've been listening to the discussion about policy one twenty three, and it raised some questions in my mind about why all of the talk is focused around gender when there are many other things that may, might disqualify somebody from participating. And I was wondering if there had been any discussion about um, possibly some co-ed uh, teams or um, teams that weren't focused solely around opportunity for scholarships um, for those children that may not be able to participate for other reasons. Um, because I know my son is going to have difficulty participating in sports, even though he is very athletic and likes to participate. Um, that will be an issue for him moving forward. So I was just wondering if there had been, you know, it seems to me that we're kind of boxed into this gender issue when really um, the root is everybody's afraid they're going to lose opportunity and they're going to lose um, scholarships. But there are so many other reasons students should be participating in sports. It, you know, they learn teamwork, they learn how to, um, you know, athletics, things like that. Um, so I was just wondering if any of those conversations had happened about considering other options or other things besides just trying to pigeonhole genders. Um, and then I'm wondering if there's any plans to um, look at your special education plan. I was on your website and there's a document up there that's dated 2014 to 2017, but there's no content in it. So as a parent, it's very difficult for me trying to navigate special education and trying to figure out the very complicated world of special education. Um, I don't know where to go for answers. I don't know what I'm trying to navigate. Um, I don't know what my son's future looks like or what should be happening or what shouldn't be happening. 
Um, is it normal for a child to be pulled out of class and sit in a hallway? I don't know. Nobody, you know, I get conflicting answers if that's normal or not. So um, I'm looking for a special education plan. And then regarding the school-based counseling, I, I know you guys were just approving the policy, but I'm wondering where the parent fits in there. Because if the child is receiving counseling in school, um, when does the parent have the opportunity to participate in that? Or when do they get feedback or updates regarding that counseling? And is that counseling session pulling them out of their regular education? So I'm just um, looking for answers to those things. It wasn't a policy, it was a contract. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I, just I have a it. feeling you're going to be gotten in <coughs> touch with them, several different people. That's fine. And <laughs> Since you brought up three or four different issues that cover different departments, but That's we fine. will have someone get in touch with you. Thank chance you. To. And you're in luck. We have the best assistant superintendent for special education in the state. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that. I'll hold me to that. You can hold me to that. <laughs> okay. Is there anyone else? I'm awake, so everyone is sure if they really want to get up here and talk. You're all welcome. Is that it? Okay. Uh, if that's the case, um, are there any board members who have any issues or issues they'd like to bring up? Seems to be the, the evening for getting everything out in the open. If not, you have the dates of our future meetings. Uh, and after that, uh, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn to executive session for legal and uh, personnel. So moved. Second. All those in favor of that adjournment say aye.